Hi everybody, welcome to the first of the practice webinars for the 2013 diploma. It doesn't seem so long ago that we finished the 2012 diploma. Um, you should all have received uh, some uh, instructions about the course and about the pre-reading website. Now the pre-reading website is Student Skin Consult. Over the last, um, oh, I think about nine, ten weeks, I've been running a series of um, lectures on uh, Wednesday night. Um, for undergraduates and most of those lectures are within the website now. Um, it takes a little while to listen through them but uh, if you want to spend some time and uh, listen to me chatting then you'll see them in there. Now to get into the website you'll use your username and password that you normally use um, to get in. Let me just go in with my username and password. And when you go into the website, the Student Skin Consult, you'll see that it's all, all the website, the main one that we're going to use for the diploma is similar to this, same sort of basic layout. But let's go to the education section because that's where the undergraduate course is. Um, and the undergraduate course is in this part here. I'll go there first and then I'll come back to these lectures that we've in fact done. So the undergraduate course, it's laid out like this. Um, there's a little podcast, there's a series of teaching cases. Now each of these teaching cases, some of these early ones have little videos attached to them um, as well, but the teaching cases you basically just click on and it will take you to the uh, case and you just quietly work your way uh, through it. Just have a little read of uh, what I've uh, what I've written there, and just quietly work your way through it. If you can even, you know, you don't have to work your way through all the teaching cases that are in here, but if you certainly get maybe the first six or so, it sort of gives you the introduction to dermatology, introduction to dermatological terms. There's a couple of tutorials in here. There's a nice one here at the Logical Images uh, website that will take you through a um, uh, description of, you know, macules, papules, nodules, blisters, vesicles, etc. Just the terminology for them. And it's well animated as well, so it's useful to go through that. There's a good glossary there as well. Um, to work your way through a teaching case, you look at the little question that's there. What do you think causes this lesion? Well, that's, you know, you might look at that and think that's a little uh, squamous cell skin cancer. You know, it's tender, it's a firm nodule on the ear. But after a wee while, you'll realize that that's a condition called chondrodermatitis nodularis helicis. It's a little bit of ischemic necrosis of cartilage. It's usually the most protuberant part of cartilage in the ear, and it's usually the side that the patient lies on. Um, and so you don't need to necessarily do some great mutilating surgery for something like that. Um, you can do a small wedge excision of this, or sometimes even an injection of a little bit of cortisone will allow the body to suppress the inflammation that gets there and get rid of a little bit of ischemic cartilage, of necrotic cartilage through the skin there. But anyway, you click on this here, it tells you what, uh, what it is. Then for the next question, you click on that and it takes you to the next question. And you just work your way through the, the various things that I've put there. Now, if you don't particularly want to work through these things like that and think as you go, the other alternative is to look at some of these lectures that uh, we've in fact done. Um, these lectures look at the main elements of the uh, course itself there, and I in fact go through some of the teaching cases as part of the uh, as part of the um, video. The videos are all in uh, an area of YouTube, an unlisted area of YouTube, so you'll be able to view these on any computer, PC, Macintosh, you can view on your iPhone if you want. But um, it's best to view on a computer or an iPad or some other tablet. Um, you can click on it to view it at this size, or you can um, make the, um, the video full screen by looking at a little section that will be down here if it's played that allows you to click on the outer area here and it makes it full screen. Problem is that these are recorded in high definition so if you're playing it at full screen it actually you sometimes have to hit the pause 
to just allow the video to download sufficiently, depending on how fast your internet connection is, and then undo the pause and get it to play again to allow you to just view it continuously. Otherwise, the damn thing's going to stop and start if you've got a relatively slow internet connection and you're trying to uh, download this in high definition. But um, all the, the various lectures are there that you can, uh, you can click on. And it goes into uh, many of the things that we will, in fact, cover in the diploma, but it covers them at um, you know, more an undergraduate level. We'll go into everything in a lot more detail later on. I may even incorporate some of these particular videos into the main part of the diploma itself, so you get a chance to look at them again um, later on. So the reading, pre-reading for the course is to actually go into Student Skin Consult and have a look at either the teaching cases themselves or the videos and just try, even if you get into the habit of maybe doing one a day or one every two days for the next little while, you'll certainly quietly work your way um, through them. You might get sick of my Scottish voice by the end of it as well, but uh, you just need to see. Um, what I'm going to do now is go into the actual uh, website that we use for the diploma itself. And that's the My Skin Consult website. Now again, it's the same username and password that we've given you. I haven't um, got you all registered in there yet. You will be registered in there from the beginning of January. So I'll get all that done over that time. Um, but we'll just go into it just at the moment. And you'll see it's laid out in this particular manner here. So the modules are in this section, the ADD modules. You'll click on that, and the various modules um, will come up. Now, the textbook that we're going to use in the diploma, there'll be two textbooks that uh, I'll be using this year. One is this one, Clinical Dermatology by uh, Habif, and it's the fifth edition. This is a very, very good book. It's got um, excellent images. I don't expect you to read that textbook from cover to cover, but I do want you to look at the images related to each chapter. Um, and I make note in the beginning of a module as to the bits in, in Habif that I'd like you to certainly have a look at. The other um, textbook that I'm going to recommend this year is one called the Oxford uh, Handbook of Medical Dermatology. It's a little handbook. Um, it's written by a lady by the name of Susan Burge. Now, Susan is a, an eminent um, British dermatologist who, and, and in fact, Student Skin Consult, the layout of Student Skin Consult, the topics that I've gone over, were actually topics that Susan Burge um, thought would be necessary for a well-rounded undergraduate who was getting a, a well-rounded education in dermatology. And she was the president of the British Medical Association at one stage as well. And she's written this handbook with her daughter. Um, and it's a particularly good way of approaching dermatology. And I'll go into it a little bit later on as well. But that's the second book that I want you to keep around in your pocket. But the one to look at the pictures is Habif clinical dermatology. I'll send you out details, by the way, of these two books as an email later on. So the modules are found here, um, all the topics. Each module is done over a two-week period. Now, some modules obviously have several parts to them. You can see here that, um, you know, the psoriasis module, psoriasis and papillosquamous diseases, has at least three parts to it. I think the most that any module has is four parts. The vast majority just have two parts, or three at the most. We'll have a little look, say, at the, um, the eczema one. Um, let's just have, well, let's have a little look at the contact, uh, the atopic dermatitis part of the, of the eczema one. I'll wait till that comes up in your screen. Now, what you'll see in each module is we'll put at the beginning what we're trying to teach you, what are the main aspects of this that we want you to concentrate on. There'll be a little podcast here that has me chatting uh, about the particular module. We had the podcasts initially before we had some of the videos. And there's also a video there at the beginning. Now, what the video does is it mainly goes over the images that you're going to see in the module. 
and it describes the images in much more detail. In other words, I'm trying to get your eye into what you have to see when you're looking at an image. I'm trying to point out the major things. Each of the images will um, enlarge. Some will enlarge a lot more than that. If you want to move an image around, um, hold it down with your mouse uh, on the left click and just move the image. Just keep it uh, down. So you can move the image to one side or to the bottom if you're wanting to read something. You can just move that image around on the page and still keep it up. If you want to get the image down again, you click it in the center and it will go back to its, uh, its usual position. We also use links to DermNet. DermNet's um, a website set up by Amanda Oakley in the New Zealand Dermatology Association many years ago. And it's a very, very good website in the sense that the material that it has is well laid out. It's, there's not a lot of verbiage involved with it. There are good images and um, they, they cover the main points of a particular topic. I'll cover the things here, but then I'll often refer you to DermNet in various bits. So, for instance, if we click that just now, it'll then take you to the, the particular relevant section of DermNet that I want you to look at. There's another very detailed website, by the way, called eMedicine that has a big dermatology section as well. But it is, in my opinion, for what we're trying to teach at, at our level and the diploma level, it's far too detailed. And there's a whole lot of stuff in there that you just waste your time doing, going over. So I really want you just to use the links that I give you in here. Just click on those links and it'll take you to the relevant sections that I want you to go to. Um, you'll be able to then get exposed to some of Amanda's images there as well and some of the comments that she makes um, there too. So it's important to look at those links, just read through what's, uh, what's there and we've tried to integrate some of the material that's available elsewhere on the net into the diploma itself. There's no point in me rewriting some of this when it's done very well like this and we can easily access it. So to get back to the website, you just click the back button again and it'll take you back to where you are in the, uh, in the website. So you just work your way down through the module. Each part uh, here has 10 parts to it. Um, there's usually three images like this in each part. There's a little bit of text associated with each image. Sometimes I'll put you to other articles, like for instance this Medscape article on bleach baths. Now, the first time you do that, you may have to just register yourself for Medscape. That just means putting in a username and password. But once you've done it once, you don't really need to do it any other time after that. Um, when you come to the end of a module, you'll find two things. You'll see that there is an MCQ section. And for the first week, we have two webinars. We have a webinar week one and week two of each module. In the first week, I want you to have gone over the MCQs um, beforehand. And you just click on the link and it will take you to the MCQs. For instance, this is the MCQs associated with this atopic dermatitis uh, particular module. And to do the MCQs, what you do is you, you well, let's just look at this first one here. Um, weeping of the skin is a feature of acute eczema. Yeah, it is. That's true. You know, one of the features of eczema is spongiosis, fluid between the keratinocytes and the epidermis, and that breaks out onto the surface, and that's what gives you the weeping. So you just click true there. Oozing eczematous skin is rarely secondarily infected. Well, that's false because you, when you get any oozing in the skin like that, it often does get secondary staph infection. So a lot of eczema is secondarily infected with staphylococci, and the staphylococci may play a significant part in keeping the eczema going. So usually in a weeping eczema, you've got to treat both the infective component and the eczema component. Um, so it's usually some topical antibiotic or a normal antibiotic and a topical uh, steroid cream. You've got to treat both components to get it to settle. So that would be false. You click that. Uh, in chronic eczema, the skin is often thinned. Um, that's also false. In chronic eczema, when you've rubbed and scratched the skin, the skin thickens. It lichenifies. That's a classic feature of that. So that you would put false there. Much of what we see in eczema is secondary to scratching. That's true. Um, atopics have dry skin, irritable skin. There's an abnormality in the 
um, uh, barrier function. So they rub and scratch the skin. And so a lot of what you see is because of that rubbing and scratching. And bits that a kid can't get at, you know, under its nappy area or, uh, or the like, you just don't get the same uh, clinical signs at all. So much of what we see in eczema is secondary to scratching. And chronic facial eczema in an infant may be a manifestation of food allergy. Well, it can. Often just uh, eczema around the face, round the mouth. It can be a contact allergy to um, eggs or some other food that the child's eating. Um, so you've always got to think of that. If it's mainly a chronic facial eczema in an infant, then think that it might be, in fact, a manifestation of food allergy. So you then work through the others the same way, and then you come to the end, and if you press continue at the end, what will happen is it will then mark them for you. Obviously, you see here it's not giving it's not giving you the answers if you if you haven't already answered them. But the ones you've answered, it'll either give you a nice green tick like that if you've got them right, or it'll give you a red cross if you've got it wrong. So, <clears throat> I want you to have done those questions before we actually do the week one webinar, because that's when I'll be asking one of you. You know, I usually take one person for each of one of these sections, and we go through it, um, and we talk off those, much as I've done that just now, we talk off the answers in terms of uh, giving you some additional information that's there. Sorry, let me just go, we'll go back to where we were in that. Uh... Now, the other thing that you have to do is for the second week of a module, um, for the second webinar, there are these, these written online assessment questions. And these have to be done by the second Thursday. Um, so let's click on these, and it'll take us to that uh, set of questions. And so here are the module questions for the, uh, the dermatitis module. These are the five questions here. An image, um, you can click on the, uh, on the image to enlarge it. Remember, left click and move it to one side. How would you manage a child with this type of eczema behind these? Um, okay, well, we'll be, I'm not going to tell you, but once you've read the module, you'll be able to write uh, for me what the management of that would be, how you, what advice you would give, what topicals you would use, what other general advice you would give. It's just like you were seeing a patient that, that, that had that problem. And you write your response in here, in this bit underneath it. But what I'd advise you to do is do a Word document, open a Word document first, and write your answers in the Word document first. And then when you've finished all of the questions, the five questions here, just cut and paste from your Word document into there. Because I can tell you there's nothing worse than perhaps putting your answers in here, in here, and in here, and then suddenly you have some problem with your internet connection and you lose it all. And you think, bugger, um, I've done all that work and I've gone and lost it. So do it on a, a Word document that's automatically being saved all the time. And then when you come to the end, cut and paste into these little spaces what your answer is. And then when you're ready, press Submit at the bottom there. And what happens there is that your answers are then automatically sent in to me um, into a particular area of the, uh, of the website. Um, let me show you where it comes in at my end. I'll just, uh, I'll just go into um, the website as the admin and I'll show you where it comes in at my end. Because we've got quite a few people in the website now, it takes a little while just to get in. But I just want to show you how it comes into me so you know what, uh, what happens. But you've got to get those answers into me by the second week of a module, before the Thursday night, because that's when we'll go over the answers to those questions. So you've got to be able to get those into me by that time. If it's after that, you just don't get properly marked for it. Let me go down here to... Um, let me come to one, let me just go to Thomas, we'll come to Thomas down here, we'll just open his up. Ah, no, sorry, I didn't want to do that, wrong bit. Let me just come to the right section, sorry. Bear with me and I'll just get, uh, get this up. 
So we've got a record in here of everybody who's uh, done the diploma at any time, and we can look back at uh, what they've done, what their answers were, or anything else. Um, it's all sort of recorded in here. It's taking a wee while to log everyone in. Let me just come down the bottom here, and let's take... Um, who we take? Let's take Graham. Graham was very good. Graham got a distinction last time. And so if I come down to Graham, you can see that all of Graham's things are in here. All the modules that he's done, the examination, when we come to do the exam, the exam's done the same way, and all of that comes in here as well. Let's look at Graham's things for module two. So if I click on that, up will come his answers. You can see that you don't need to put a lot of material in there. In other words, the answers don't have to be, you know, half a page long or something like that. Just answer the question that I've asked there. Um, so often four or five lines is as much as you need, just so that you've given me the main details that are in there. Now, some people write much bigger, um, you know, answers than others. Um, that's fine, but I want you to get into the habit of writing short and to the point answers, because that's how you'll do it when you come to do the exam. And you can see that this is how it comes to me, and then I write in here um, a response to what he's done and point out any little uh, errors or any little point, and um, then it's graded, and we grade them A, B, C, D, or F. Um, F is a fail, A is, is excellent, B is very good, C is uh, good, D is a sort of bare pass, and F is a fail on that particular thing. Um, and then when I press submit here, what I've written in there gets sent to you as an email. So that's how you get your feedback from um, your answers to, to the particular questions. Okay? So that's how it looks at, uh, at my end. So just take my advice. <clears throat> Do it on a, a Word document first and cut and paste it into here when you've, when you've finished them all and then press submit at the bottom and then it will come to me. So is everybody happy enough with that aspect of it? Anybody uh, want to ask a question on anything that I've chatted about so far? No? Happy enough with that? Okay. Let me go back to where we were. So that's the, um, the layout of uh, each of the, the, um, the modules. As I say, that was just part of the dermatitis module. Um, the first bit was on uh, aspects, other aspects of eczema and hand dermatitis. The second part of that module would be contact dermatitis and patch testing. The third part was the atopic dermatitis that we looked at. The links to the MCQs and to the module assessment questions are always at the end of the last of the modules of, that are in any one particular module. It's at the end of the last one. So, for instance, for the acne and rosacea one, the um, questions will be at the end of this module here, module 3B. And we'll cover most of the topics um, in dermatology uh, as we work our way through. We do do an exam, an online exam, after about module 7B. So in about this level here, we have a, an online exam. And an online exam is um, very similar to those um, assessment questions that you've done, but there's a mixture of little cases like that plus some MCQ questions. And they're done within a certain time, time limit. In other words, at a particular time on a particular day, I'll give you access to a section of the website uh, through a password. You just go in there, answer it within a certain time, press submit at the bottom, and the answers are all sent to me, and then I mark them. But we'll, there'll be a practice exam I'll show you about later on, and we'll, we'll go all over that. Now, the other important thing in this website is the virtual clinical meeting. That's this section here because that's where you're going to put up your cases. You've got to do five cases each semester for me, um, and they can be anything, any skin-related uh, problem. It can be a skin cancer, but if you're, I don't want, if, you know, if you're mainly a skin cancer practice, I don't want 10 BCCs and how you fix them. Um, I want you to try and give me a mixture of, uh, of stuff, even if someone just comes in with tinea between the toes, um, I want to see it. Now, the important thing about a clinical case is that you're, photographs are in focus. So get a little digital camera, make sure you've got it set on automatic, make sure you've always got the macro on. Leave the macro on all the time. 
we'll show that at the at the weekend meeting. We we do a little section on photography, and I don't let you out to morning tea at one stage until you can photograph an orange that will be sitting on the table uh, and show me every pore in the orange and show me it in great crystal clarity, so that I know you can um, do a do a decent photograph. You don't need a big fancy camera. Any Sony CyberShot or Canon uh, PowerShot type camera will do fine. You don't need to spend more than about $250 on a, on a good camera. But just set it to automatic and set the macro on all the time. You don't ever need to take the macro off and at least the photographs will be in focus then. So how do you put a case up? Let me just flick into, just trying to remember one of the cases here. Um, let me just have a quick look at this case from Doris. It's one I didn't think I had commented on. You can see the history that you need to put in is relatively, you don't need a lot, you just need to give the details, main details of the rash, main details of significant medicines the patient might be on, and um, what you feel the issue is. Um, do you need help with the diagnosis with this case, or do you just want to show a, an interesting example of a, of a particular rash? Um, each of the images you can click on, and it will enlarge like this. and then click it in the center, it will go back. And usually when we're going to make a comment on it, I'm surprised I haven't commented on this one, this one's come in recently. If you want to make a comment, and you can comment on other people's uh, cases, it's often, by the way, one of the big advantages of each of you putting in cases is that you all get then exposed to everybody else's cases, so it expands the um, number of skin cases you're going to see dramatically. And if you want to make a comment on a case, you just, for instance, click there, add comment, and you can put, your, you just type a little bit of, uh, of text in there and just press submit. And then what will happen is your comment will come up here and it will automatically remember who your name is. Now if you want to change that comment, you'll find modify there. You can click on modify. You can go back in and change any aspect of your comment there and then just press submit, or you can even delete it if you want to just by clicking that. Um, so that's how you comment on a case. Let me show you how you submit a case. You basically, let me just go to the clinical meeting again, and to add a case to the clinical meeting, see this little bit here that said add new case? You just click on that. So when you click on that, first of all, your details will automatically come up here because it knows you are the person that's uh, that's coming in. You click here as to what type of case it is. Is it for diagnosis, management, is it an interesting case, or whatever. But um, usually just click on one of those three. And then you put your little bit of text in this box here. Now you can cut and paste it from patient's records if you've got an electronic record, or you just type the bit of text that you want um, in here. Let me just put just a couple of words in here. Forget these two boxes underneath. So how do you now, uh, you've put your bit of history and the like in there, how do you add your images? You go to this bit here where you click, you know, it says attach pictures. Forget about that size bit. Mind you, I don't want images put in that are 10 megapixels or something like that. First of all, it'll take ages to upload them, and it, it takes ages for people to download them. You've got to be able to resize images so that they're going to be a megabyte or less. I don't want them much larger than that. One of the problems with these new modern cameras is that sometimes, you know, they'll say they're 14 megapixels. Well, you go in there and make sure you can reset your camera so that the images come down um, to a megabyte or less, or if you're going to take um, big images, you've got to be able to resize them, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute or two. But what you do is you click there, that'll take you to wherever you happen to store your images in your computer, usually it's in My Pictures. Um, go to the folder where you, you may have your, your images, and then <clears throat> choose the image that you want to submit. Let's uh, take this guy here. You can put a little bit of text uh, under here if you want to say the description or where it was. So uh, let's just see um, face image. And then if you've got another image, 
click the one underneath and it should take you back automatically to where you were before. Take the next image of that patient, click and put it in. And you can work your way down there. You can put up to six images. But normally, you know, three images are usually enough. In other words, I want an overview first to get an idea of the rash. Then I want a close-up after that of an, an, a new lesion and um, any other thing you want to give me. Don't give me six images of exactly the same thing, only in different sizes. Um, you know, three images is normally enough. You can give me up to six if you want. And then when you put your images in like that, don't bother with this bit about URLs. This is something I do later when, if I'm going to put references in. All you do is press submit. So if we've done this case, I've put my little bit of history in here. I've got my couple of images I've put here. Then I just go down to submit and press that. And then if we just wait a wee minute, it will automatically upload that particular, those particular images and that bit of text to the, um, to the clinical meeting. You can see if you've got really big images, those I think those images are about a megapixel, but if you've got really big images, it'll take a long time to upload. Because we're using a fair bit of bandwidth tonight doing this talk, um, it, it's taking this just a little bit of time to um, upload these. Uploads are always a lot slower than downloads. Your, your the internet setup um, is such that usually your download speed is you know, five or six times faster than your upload speed. So it takes a little while just to uh, just to upload the uh, the images there. There we go. So when it's added, it gives you a little case number there, and we just press OK, and that will then take you in, and the image the case should come up here. There we go. So we click on that. Oh, note another thing. See how under this one it says update this case, but and the others that have been a because I've put it in, but in others that have been submitted by someone else, that doesn't come up. In other words, you can update your own case, but you can't update anyone else's case. But you're able to update your own. I'll show you that in a minute. But to go into the case, then just click on that. Up will come the images there. There was a little bit of text I said underneath. We'll just click on that to enlarge that particular image. This is a guy who had um, Porphyria cutanea tarda, PCT. And uh, in PCT, they've got circulating porphyrins. They've usually got problems with their liver. They've got porphyrins in the blood that are activated by ultraviolet light. And so they get skin fragility and they get blisters, um, usually on sun-exposed areas in the arms and the like. But they also get excess body hair, and they get hirsutism in areas where you don't normally have hair, you know, like this guy in the cheeks. And they usually get a bit of hyperpigmentation as well. But I think this lower image will show you some of that skin fragility where there have been blisters there that have burst there. Um, and so you've got little erosions um, as well. So, th you know, the history would be here. Remember that bit about if you want to add a comment, just click on that and you can put your comment about the case in there. What normally happens is when you put a case up, I go in there or one of the people, some of the people that help me with the diploma go in here and will write um, a bit of a comment and a bit of uh, additional uh, help for you um, or comments on the case itself. There we go. So that's how you submit a case. Any problems with that? Is that clear enough as to how you submit a case uh, to the virtual clinical meeting? Okay. Happy enough with that? Anyone got any question they want to ask? Nope. Okay. Um, there are other sections of this website you'll see along here. Um, you can explore those as you go along. The two main sections are the module section and the clinical meeting. Um, uh, in these image diagnosis sections, I may have to update these. Usually for a particular module, yeah, I will. Um, what's happened here is that um, I need to reset them every three months. So these are the bits of work I have to do with this. There's a rollover section. Um, this is where there's a series of uh, cases that um, you can just click on to uh, see them. The image comes up like this. Um, a little question, what features do you note about this lesion, abdominal wall? It's one of the red scaly diseases, but which one? Um, if you then go over and click on the image, what happens is that the various bits of text appear like this. It highlights some of the uh, the important features of the image. 
and you just click again to, to close it. Um, it's just an additional teaching method. There's a presentation section. Now in the presentation section, there'll, there'll be a series of um, uh, things in here related to the weekend meeting that we're going to do. Um, when we when these are recorded, they're in fact put up in this particular area here so that you're able to go back to them later on. These are as PowerPoints. There's um, a section with uh, PDF and Word files as well. And you just go in there to click and these will come up. This additional material that will be in there in the presentation section. There's a set of teaching cases. Um, there's only a couple in there just now. They're like the ones in Student Skin Consult. Um, this is the important bit here, the teleconference section. If you miss a webinar, then this is where you'll go to find it because this is where the link is. So when we finish uh, a particular module, the recording is up here. So for instance, like module two there, if we were going to the um, MCQ's uh, teleconference, you'd go in, you'd click on that. I wouldn't let it run too long because it will use too much uh, power, but what happens is that, I'll just click on this to stop it, what happens is that the uh, YouTube video will come up here and you'll be able to look at that video and uh, go through the meeting that we've had if you happen to have missed it. So that's where you'll, um, you'll in fact find it. Now, obviously these will all have to be changed so that you're not able to access them just now, but they'll only become live after we've had the meeting and I put the recording. These are the recordings from last year that are up there at the moment. Um, and in the resources section at the very end here, this is where, you know, those module tests that I said you had to do after each module, they will be linked at the end of the module, but you can get them through this bit here as well. Um, if you click on that, then the various cases that you have to look for each module will come up. Now, we looked at the module two uh, tonight, so if I just click on that, you'll just see the same ones as you saw earlier on. But as I say, you'll be automatically linked to that anyway at the end of the relevant module. But if you need to, you can go to the resources section here and... Um, click on completed module tests and do it that way. The various exams are in there, the practice exams in there. These are all password protected. So, you know, you can't get into those just now because you don't know the password to get into those. Um, but what happens when we run the exam is that I give you the password and I make it active about five minutes before the exam starts. And you click on that and you'll get into the exam. That way. We'll go through all of this again later, but that's where that's held within the website. But the two bits that you need to concentrate on are the modules here, where the modules are delivered, and the clinical meeting where you put up the cases. The rest of it is just added, is just material that I can link to from these two main sections here. Any questions on that so far? I'm sorry, there's a lot of stuff here, but I just... Uh, wanted to go through this. I'll be running these these sort of teaching um, practice modules, uh, sorry, um, webinars again. I'll do another one in a couple of uh, weeks' time. Everybody will automatically get another invitation. If you want to come in for another one then, um, by all means, uh, come in. But I'll be going over much the same sort of stuff uh, again. I want to end up with two, uh, I know it's nearly 9 o'clock, but bear with me. I just want to go into two other things. And the first is ACDC, which is um, what I use to keep my images. I think I gave you a link. You can use Picasa, which is another one. But um, ACDC has been around for some time. It's a good way of uh, storing images. You can, in fact, download a, um, a free version of it, a free trial of it for 30 days if you want to see if it'll be of, uh, of relevance to you. Um, here we go. I'll wait till that comes up in your screen. What I do is I keep all my images in um, various folders. Um, most of it's within, say, um, my pictures. Um, all of these are folders within my pictures. Um, 
each of uh, these individual folders if I uh, click on them it will bring up all the individual images that are there um, and ACDC allows you to do uh, a fair number of things for instance say you had imported the images from your camera and they were all very big images and say you needed to resize them all you what you can do is just click on the uh, control and click on all the ones that you wanted for instance to resize then go up to batch up here and go to batch resize click on that and then just decide what percentage of the original uh, you want to resize them at you may want to resize at 50 percent of the original that's not half the size it'll actually be a lot less than half the size of the megapixels but if you click on that and then just click start resize it'll automatically um, resize each of these images it'll keep the originals as well so let me just do that and I'll click resize here uh, I'll say yes to all so it'll then resize them and it sticks them at the end so these I mean the size of these four here just now is listed down here as 767 kilobytes so that's roughly about 200 kilobytes each still a good sized image let me show you you know that's the size of the image there with ACDC you can play around with enlarging it like this down the bottom just by pressing you know you can make your images bigger and smaller quite readily um, these are just all images of I think the same uh, the same guy um, the original images which were up the top here 1456 let me just go to 1456 and see what the size were of these original images um, let me just highlight these so I think originally these were about 1.4 megabytes so we've at least half the size of them um, when we do the resizing but that's one way you can resize your uh, your images lots of other things you can do with ACDC um, making slideshows um, doing all sorts of things you can uh, email things you can edit uh, a particular image you know vary the, the color um, and various other things um, and you can also send images email them from ACDC as well if you're interested in it as I say just download a free version of it play around with it if you don't like it you don't have to uh, then it costs about fifty dollars or something for the um, for the uh, software but I find it very very useful and the other thing I find useful and this will be the last thing I talk about tonight is Snagit let me show you Snagit Now what Snagit does is it allows you to um, do um, copies of things. It allows you to uh, copy up anything that's on the screen in front of you. So let me, for instance, bring back up um, this particular uh, image here. Say I wanted to copy part of that. I open Snagit. I click the little red button here. I go here and we say I want to just copy this particular section I do that and then that will come up in the Snagit editor like this and when it comes up like that I can then save it um, somewhere else um, the size of it will be a lot less than the other most Snagit captures like that even say that initial image had been say a megabyte or three megabytes when you actually do a little snag at capture of part of it that'll only be about 200 kilobytes so it'll be about a fifth of the size so it's a very quick way of resizing an image and then you just click file and save and save it wherever you want to, to save the other thing with Snagit is that you can draw little arrows uh, into it say you want to highlight something and you can put a bit of text in there um, as well so a little box here and then you can just put your uh, text in there and you can move that text anywhere you want we'll leave it up there fine 
and then you can just say file save and you can then save that with and it'll save it with the text and everything else on it as well you can take another image that you might have and merge it with that image put another smaller version of an image down here and save the two of them together there's all sorts of things you can do with Snagit so it's very useful if um, you're on some other website and there's a particular image or something there that's maybe in a PDF or something like that and you want to, to capture that bit of image you can just capture it using Snagit Snagit costs about $30, $35 again you can get a free um, use for I think 30 days Again, I'd strongly recommend you download it and have a look and play with it as well. It's useful for working with your images. and uh, You'll find a lot of other uses for Snagit as well. But those are the two main things I wanted to chat about there just now. Okay, I'm sorry that's been a little bit um, uh, labored tonight going through all those, uh, all those various things. Any questions anyone wants to ask me just now? Any other aspects about the diploma later on that anyone wants to ask? The main thing about tonight was just to uh, have a chance to chat to some of you, to get you to see the, uh, the website and how we're using it, to get the feel for it. As I say, I'll make it open for you by the beginning of January, so that you'll have at least a month before the diploma starts to uh, get in there and get a feel for it. And if you want to start putting in some cases at that stage, um, put them up. Don't worry if you make a you know, muck-up of a case. I can easily take it out from my end, so there's no hassle with that. So before the diploma starts, so if you want to put some cases up, that's fine. And any cases you put up then, if you want them to count for your five cases um, for each semester, that's fine as well. Um, <clears throat> we try and make it all as interactive as we can during the webinars. Um, and the whole course, uh, you know, as I say, we're, we're using everybody's experience together in this. And it's really tremendous when you've got many people in different areas all contributing. Uh, especially to the clinical meeting and contributing their experience because all of you have had different experience, you'll have seen different cases and it's great when we're able to sit down together and uh, share that experience. That's where learning really comes from. So I hope that's been useful tonight. I'll send you an invitation to the next one of these that, uh, that we have. Um, the last of the student uh, skin consult lectures I'll be doing I think I've got one next week. I may do one other one, but uh, certain, next week's may be the last one, but you'll automatically re receive an invitation to that via Skin Consult uh, and Student Skin Consult anyway, um, if you're registered for that, as you all are. So I hope you've enjoyed that tonight. Um, I will look forward to having a chat to you uh, next time. Bye-bye. Oh, by the way, I'll send you all a link to the recording of this one that I've done tonight. And if you want to look at it again and go over aspects of it, you can uh, go through that uh, link when I send it to you. Bye-bye. See you next time.